Hey, good morning, everyone. Looks like we've got a number of folks on board today. I'd like to thank you for attending CA Associates' next uh, e-learning webinar, Advanced Post Processing in Ansys Mechanical. My name is George Bauer with CA Associates. Our webinar will be approximately 30 minutes. Um, now I believe I have everyone muted uh, just for uh, keep the, the noise level down, make sure everyone can hear me, and uh, that way uh, we can, I can answer questions uh, if you submit them through uh, the chat window. To get peak credits for this, uh, this seminar, please complete the poll questions I'll open up during the seminar, and also uh, Christina from our office will give you a, a survey to fill out and return to us. Okay. With, let's get started in advanced post-processing in ANSYS Mechanical. We're performing the best analysis uh, to simulate your part's particular performance and the various analyses you may need, need to perform. Uh, it's important to communicate those results effectively. So today, this webinar is going to focus on advanced post-processing methods. Uh, there are of uh, existing post-processing techniques. We're going to focus a few of the advanced topics and some of the new topics within ANSYS version 14.5. So I'd like to demonstrate uh, some combinations today. Also, your defined results objects con using constraint geometry with path and surface plots, and then combining various results quantities and displays through chart data. I'll cover some of the uh, force and reaction probes uh, and uh, see how those can be utilized for various results and then we will be demonstrating uh, accessing uh, plotting node and element results directly in mechanical. All of you have some MAPDL commands uh, that you use for post-processing. We'll show you how to use those within the workbench environment and access and pass back and forth some key information data. A um, particular model I'll be covering is a structural example. Uh, this is a pillow block. Uh, tied with a couple bolts with some bolt preload and some uh, two various load cases. One, we have a bearing load inside this bearing race, and then also a secondary load where we apply a pressure on this face. Uh, this particular example is a um, structural example, but I know that uh, you have other analysis requirements. Some of the post-processing techniques uh, we'll show you how to do is, is very applicable to those other analysis. So let's go into uh, mechanical directly. And first I'd like to show you is solution combinations. So in my outline tree within mechanical, I have a couple static structural analysis uh, with, with two design conditions. So I've got design condition one and two. Both of these are structural analyses. I'd like to show you solution combination. When uh, I'm going to talk about a number of different items in the outline tree, uh, if you highlight the model, option here. Uh, this brings some other categories to put in or, or, or fold to put in the outline tree that may not automatically be there. The first one being a solution combination, because this combination can span multiple analyses types. Uh, to take a peek at our uh, project page, in this example, I've got my geometry tied in to a structural when I'm sharing the geometry material data and a model with another analysis. And this creates a multiple folder scenario. Perhaps we need to combine results for analysis quantities we're interested in. We can do that through solution combination. If we add this item to the outline tree, we can come over to the worksheet mode. And if we right click, we can start adding uh, just combinations of everything in the outline tree. In this case, we specify a multiplying coefficient. We use the pull menu to select one of the environment names. And we can use this kind of spreadsheet to add a multiple factor. For example, uh, let's need two and a half times this uh, second design condition. And perhaps we want to combine results with this factor with the baseline design condition. And we'll do that. Once solution combination is, is in the tree, we can then insert results just as if we were inserting standard results uh, for, these, for, the reg for the individual analyses. So here we've got equivalent stress, maximum principal stress, some contact results, all our standard post-processing. So, uh, we can then now look at inserting new ones to combine those effects. So this solution combination, perhaps we want to say 
I need the maximum principal stress and for a factor of 1 times the design condition 2 plus 2.5 times the second design condition. I'm going to rename this solution combination to be, let's say, a maximum condition. And we're going to get our maximum principal stress. Uh, you can use the same, uh, same kind of copy and paste as you do in the outline tree. If I wanted to duplicate this solution combination, and then let me rename this one. Maybe uh, I need a max and a min for perhaps a fatigue analysis. Let me rename the min solution combination and then adjust this factor. Perhaps I've got a, a negative coefficient on the environment. So now we can go back and evaluate the results for these conditions uh, just as we would do our normal. It goes and accesses the data and performs those calculations. So if we have equivalent, uh, if we have maximum principal stress on our block, we can see this range here. We take a look at these combinations. We see increases for the maximum and, and the decrease for min, and we can start perhaps building a, uh, a low profile for a fatigue scenario. Uh, that's one, one tool here is in that solution combination. The uh, thing I'd like to describe is user-defined results objects. First, Next structural block assembly condition, we have various uh, results quantities, uh, total deformation, uh, equivalent stress. When we want to access results that are stored in the binary results file, RST results file, we can take the solution folder and come up to the worksheet. You'll also see in the solution folder we can insert a user-defined result. Uh, the handy ways to access user-defined results is hiding the worksheet and look at all the available results quantities that you may want to plot in Workbench Mechanical. See various results quantities uh, may not uh, initially be available via the pull-down menu. You can kind of pick choose which quantities you need. And the key thing is to, to utilize uh, the expression in developing a, a uh, user-defined result. So for example, if we decided, just as a comparison, if we wanted this user-defined results as the, the resultant displacement, we can right-click a user-defined result in our outline tree and evaluate that right away. That, uh, the key things with user-defined results in the details pane is looking at the expression, and then I'll show you an example with identifier. In this case, u sum is just the root sum squared of the displacements, and that match our total deformation. You can see the numbers don't change. We're just accessing the result file directly. Let's need to add a other user-defined result, but we'll find the expression of results quantities ourselves. Uh, just as an example, you can use mathematical functions and access the individual identifiers directly. So I'm going to I'm going to type in square a square root function and sum u x plus u i plus uz, and just do the calculation on my own, just as a test case to start working with expressions. And once you do that, click that, shows up with the yellow lightning bolt. You evaluate that just as you would another of the results. Uh, this is exactly the same as usum, but then once we've kind of tested our expressions, we can start working with and extracting data that uh, we may want to do calculations ourselves. For example, with user-defined results, uh, so we want to perform uh, some type of expression with previous user-defined results. So let's say for this u sum here, we wanted to evaluate this uh, instead of at the last time period. I've got three load steps in this analysis. So I, I cinch down one bolt in the first load step, cinch down in the other, and in the last load step, I apply my bearing load. Let's say we want to look at the deflections at time two, and I'm going to create this identifier. And this identifier will be called my block. With this identifier, once we evaluate the results, we can use the identifier named my block. Here's our resultant. If I include another user defined results in the expression, and say from the third step, third load step, I could take the u sum at the third step and subtract my block. So for example, if we wanted to 
uh, relative movement calculation from one load step to another, we can actually create that expression within the user-defined results, and then we can evaluate that. So th this is just an example with displacements, but you could see you can perform kind of um, types of manipulations with utilizing to define results and and the identifiers amongst these. So this kind of shows the relative deflection from load step three to load from load step two. And so it's a small amount of deflection with uh, locking down those bolts. So that's the final results. Um, next I want to show is the ability to do path and surface plots. Uh, path and surface plots this is uh, these types of results plotting operate on construction geometry. Some of you may be familiar in, with ANSI mechanical APDL and using path and surface plot. The way to do it in mechanical is to find some construction geometry and then scope your results to that construction geometry. So here we have the, a path, we have a, a surface. What's the surface we want to take a slice through our model? and look at some resultant stress on that. Maybe we need to uh, do a force balance as well. So with this surface, um, they works on the x, y of a coordinate system you define. And so let's go ahead and define a coordinate system real quick. We're going to um, select, let me select this, define a coordinate system. If I want to get a, a, a section cut through here, an arbitrary section through here, I'm going to take the coordinate system, I'm going to rotate it, 90 degrees, uh, that way I get X, Y plane, and maybe I need to offset that Z position a little bit off the, the surface, so let's offset that uh, 0.1 inches. Once at that, you can see, it's kind of want to take that section, I'm going to rename my coordinate system, cut, and then with the surface, come to the details, and we identify which, which coordinate system we define. So I've got a coordinate system cut, and this will take a slice through my model. Once the surface defined, uh, we can also do that with a path, is essentially do a linear cut through, through the model. With surface, we can uh, take a, a resultant quantity. Let's, let's take a look at our first load condition. Uh, we'll insert a, let's insert a, uh, a stress, let's say maximum principal stress. We can scope, instead of scoping to individual bodies like we do normally, let's take maximum principal stress and scope it to, instead of the geometry selection, let's go down to a surface. Once we do that, it's nice because you have a pull-down menu for that previously defined surface. That's literally all you have to do. You can scope it, again, to specific bodies if you like. So let's go take a look at a section cut through this bracket. So we've defined that surface. We can evaluate that results, go in and, and take that uh, map that, interpolate those stresses onto your surface. So there's, so that allows you to, to there's that kind of, with pulling on this bearing, you can kind of see the, see the bending, the principal stress uh, in bending. Okay. Um, with this, um, with scoping surface, you can also use the surface as a, as a key component to uh, looking at reaction probes. So let's take a look. to define the surface already. I'd like to show you another results quantity that's sometimes helpful. And let's go to solution. And on the probe menu, there's a number of probes that we use regularly. Uh, in this case, let's use a, a force reaction probe. This force reaction probe is typically uh, scoped to a fixed support. It's one of the supports in your model to identify the load balance at, the, at a fixed condition, boundary condition. Instead of a boundary condition, uh, we can actually scope this to an existing surface. So force reaction will do a net balance on the surface you've defined. And you can just use the pull down menu for that surface. You can identify what parts of geometry do you want to use to, to add or to interpolate this to calculate that resultant force. And, and we can do this with moments as well. So for this reaction, we'll identify just this bracket as a way to sum up the forces and calculate the resultant force on this surface. So that and insert those results. Uh, let, me add, let me zoom up here, get, highlight uh, just this, let me write all the other bodies so we can take a look at this results a little bit 
easier. There's our reactions. So we can little arrows, these directional arrows. For our removal and stress, we can kind of see the, the bending moment through the section cut here. Um, sometimes this is a little difficult to see. This is pretty uh, a good visualization. Sometimes we want to switch over to wireframe to look at look at how we're doing uh, through all the nodes. You can switch to wireframe mode uh, as well. Um, we can this force reaction is against the section cut. You can also do this with a moment reaction probe as well. At this point, just take a pause and, and get a little feedback from you folks. I'm going to open up a poll to, to kind of find out what kind of post-processing you folks do. Let me open up a poll. In this point, I ask, what type of FE post-processing do you typically perform? Are you just using mechanical to uh, produce standard contour plots, or uh, do you take the data you're generating and export that to Workbench? Uh, or, I'm sorry, export that results to Excel or, or perhaps some in-house calculations? Or do you mo do most of your post-processing in only a uh, mechanical PDL? Or is it a, a combination uh, of the bunch? So uh, with these questions, why don't you take a moment to, to submit your answers. And then that, we'll, we'll show you the answers. So far, we've got uh, a good number of folks to close the poll momentarily. Okay, looks like, hold on, let me, let me share the results. Looks like we've got a number of folks uh, answering So um, the results here, like a number of folks use a combination of many of the post-processing techniques. Um, um, workbench mechanical standard contour plots and then a combination of, of mechanical APDL, perhaps some other data. Thank you for participating in our poll. Let me save this. One thing I'd like to describe um, is continuing along the lines of force and reaction probes. Uh, let me switch back to our model here, all of our bodies. Um, with, uh, for when we're working with some complex parts and we have bolt pretension and, and contact up, we want to understand the loading throughout the, the model. We want to uh, look at the load transfer through the parts. Uh, the next thing I want to describe in solution probes is, again, force reaction probe. We're shaping force reaction to boundary conditions and surfaces. Next thing I'd like to just show is you can also highlight or, or perform a summation about a contact region. When you specify a contact region, it does allow you to use the pull menu from the contact you've set up. So in this case, I've set up a contact between the surface of the pillow block and bracket. So let me just do some of the other parts here. Let me hide the other bodies. When we set up the force reaction, again, contact pair it identifies, change the view there. It identifies the forces throughout your time history transferred through that contact pair. So sometimes that's helpful. In this case, we can see with load step one, I have 400 pounds. Uh, pretension one bolt, and I have another 400 pounds pretensioning at the time step two. So here you can see the resultant pretension coming through this this conic pair, and then as we load the bearing, you can see the various loads through this load transfer through this contact pair. Another loading for specifically for bolt pretension is through a pretension probe. This allows you to pick a specific bolt pretension when you evaluate those, those results. This will give you a load history through throughout the, the various time points you're performing the analysis. And this, we're loading this up in load step one. It stays locked in load step two. And then as we apply load, the bolt pretend reaction is essentially the net sum of all loads acting through the bolt. So it would be the bolt pretension plus applied loads from uh, the analysis. The next thing I'd like to do uh, in some of the new version 14 
14.5 uh, capabilities is show you uh, results, uh, capabilities of looking at just no element uh, acting those types of results. You can directly, uh, within a specific static structural example here, inserting a results quantity. We want to look at a key component of results in a local area. We may want to not scope it to a surface or a body. We just want more of a local area. So let's scope uh, equivalent species stress results to only certain nodes and elements in the model. Uh, to do this, once we've highlighted the area we want to focus in, we switch over to show mesh. This shows the mesh on on the model, but then allows us to switch over to selecting mesh to scope this to this results quantity. So once we select the mesh, we can then pick our node selection method, either picking them singularly, a box select for surface available nodes, or a box volume and lasso volume to select certain nodes uh, throughout the volume. So if I select a box volume, I just draw a box and it'll select all the nodes within that region. Once I'm, once I'm happy with that, and then select uh, on our results and apply those, those nodes specifically to this. So with nodes highlighted, you can evaluate this just like a, a normal results. And what it does is it identifies the nodes that you've selected and essentially builds surfaces uh, with results quantity so you can visualize that. And with that, you can see, you can kind of zoom in on this local region where I selected. I've highlighted only these certain nodes to, to extract those results. What's all hand, that's, so that's available um, accessing node, uh, nodal services. For, for post processing. Available uh, is another neat feature. Uh, I'll actually I'll come back to utilizing name selections for that. But um, sometimes we may need to look and chart up a combinations of multiple results quantities through our outline tree. What I wanted to show you now next is the availability to generate charts and tables. So with Lucian we have various results quantities. We can highlight these results quantities we want to combine in a chart and select, for example, maximum principal stress on the block from a couple different cases. And then we may want to also plot that against old pretension. So once we selected those, we then, with, with all three highlighted, if we select insert a chart, this will chart item in the bottom of our outline tree with all the items we've selected. And you can always change this. You can add and subtract to that. You'll see down below, let me expand this a little bit. You can see our chart here, identifying all the quantities, the results with time, you have control on the axes, and the output quantities. What's nice here is you can also choose to only display certain quantities from the items you select in terms of min and max. And so I just wanted to display maximum. I can go down to the details pane and admit certainties in our results. Let's get rid of all mins, and now I have a little bit more concise data to show here. Uh, and you turn on the legends just to identify these a little bit nicer. So what is nice with the tabular data, you can review the numeric quantities, but you can always copy this item and, and shoot this data over to Excel, for example, uh, if you want to you know, do some continuous post-processing in Excel. And that's a nice way to just uh, shoot the, the data over there uh, if you need it. That's a chart. So that's a handy way to utilize post-processing information. Uh, I'd like to open uh, another poll here. And a particular poll is a query just to kind of see what you're interested in. Uh, with a particular poll, we're going to see what type of FE analysis do you typically perform and what type of post-processing for the various analysis types. Linear, linear static structural, which we're showing you today. Perhaps you're running uh, linear dynamics or, or train dynamics. Maybe you uh, do mostly heat transfer or explicit uh, linear short duration type of analysis. Do you need to run an analysis for fatigue or durability or maybe some combinations? So a little bit of time to, to answer those questions. Seconds left. OK, 
Heck, we're closing in. Let me go ahead and uh, close the poll, and then I'll let some of those results. Okay, let's see. Uh, Max are, are doing nonlinear static structural or combinations of all the above. So they may be uh, including some heat transfer in their static curl, maybe doing some dynamics. Thank you for participating. Let me go ahead. I'll close that out. One more item I wanted to, to show you in, in advanced post-processing. And this is uh, getting a little bit more sophisticated in terms of accessing node and element data as well as using mechanical APDL commands. Um, perhaps you have some routines to do some post-processing um, in mechanical APDL. Perhaps you have some custom calculations or some routine in, uh, with L commands you want to include. I have an example here to, to utilize that. And there's some key features I wanted to show uh, with this. And name selection. The name selections, uh, as you may know, let me turn off our, our mesh here. Name selections transfer over to mechanical APDL. Uh, if it's a body, it transfers as a nodal component. If it's a surface, it's an element component. Um, with, I'm sorry, with a body, we can, we, I'm sorry, with a gold block here as a selected to a scope to a body. Uh, this is a name selection that gets transferred as element components. And actually, as a uh, select criteria with name selections to hone in a local area that you may want to post-process. Uh, for example, uh, identify critical block nodes, and you can do the scoping of your name selections, uh, typically through geometry, but also what we call through worksheet mode. Worksheet essentially uses uh, somewhat like select logic to build up the, the name selection. In this case, we're adding the body uh, for a selection to this a critical block node and then converting it to a mesh node. So you can actually create a name selection and utilize this through the outline tree of, of, of mesh nodes. And what I've done further here is identified local nodes, again, at worksheet mode and kind of honed in on some uh, local region uh, with respect to a local cylindrical system around my hole. So I want to take all my mesh nodes within half-inch radius of that. And we can see graphics to confirm all the nodes that I've selected. But we can utilize name selections here. If we were to insert a results quantity, let's insert maximum principle, we can scope that instead of to a specific body, we can scope that to a name selection. Let's go ahead and, and pick the existing uh, local nodes. Once we evaluate that, we can look at the results quantity just in this region. That's that's handy for managing nodes. What I want to show you with respect to mechanical APDL is within solution, you can include a command block. So this command block will run ANSYS APDL commands immediately after the slash post one. So it's solved. You can go into slash post one and edit and insert commands to run a little post processing job. In this case, the command block after the solution was solved. And I've got some commands here. Let me copy and paste this from an example routine here. And with that, let me briefly describe. We're going to resume the analysis database, which includes the name selections. And I'm going to select my local node's name selection. We know those are nodes. I'm going to try to sort to get the maximum stress on those nodes. Then I'm going to say, maybe I want to look at, or maybe I need the number of elements within 90% or greater of that maximum stress value. If I have some kind of post-processing routine that needs that number, I can get some uh, the number of elements count within 90%. Insert the command block. Uh, this will be, again, executed just after post 1. We can also show these particular uh, parameters we can send out to mechanical by identifying output search prefix to take the parameters calculated and send them to the mechanical tool within Workbench. So I'm going to use as a filter called anything starting with M1, I'm going to uh, filter out and send this back to Workbench. So once we solve that, it'll post processing job. Uh, we'll come back. You'll see that in the details pane of our command block, we now say MySQ uh, 
uh, max is 10, uh, 10, 4, 6, but I've got uh, 1,000 nodes within that 90% of that maximum value. Okay, and then let's say that uh, a couple key things with, with looking at this, if you want to look at the results from the small post-processing job, you can get solution information and get not the results from the actual job, you can also get the post output, the text output from your small little post processing job that you ran uh, after the analysis. It's a neat tool to work with APDL commands and, and get them back into the mechanical. So if we wanted to use this as a parameter within some design of experiment study, we can send this, we take a look back to, uh, take a look to our workbench project page. Those results parameters are now being sent to the project. We can then control those through a design of experiments. So that way to run some post custom post-processing script and, and add information in, in a design study. Okay. The last topic I wanted to cover right now, we're getting close, uh, actually a little bit over on time. And so um, we'd like to wrap things up. Uh, let me t peek over at our chat window. Uh, actually, let me uh, just before I d address the the questions and so forth, let me just uh, this opportunity to thank everyone for joining us today. Uh, we do have other webinars coming up, uh, e-learning webinars. Our next one is inflation layers for CFD. Uh, you can uh, go to our website www.caeai.com to keep updated on our e-learning e -learning webinars. The one following the inflation layers is a submodeling webinar, uh, which is also interesting. So, again, thank you all for, for participating.